Hi, uh, this video is about leaky gut, the causes and the association. There's been previous videos at this YouTube channel that discuss the physiology of leaky gut, the pathophysiology in more detail. And for this one, we're not going to go into all that. We're just going to go through a list of things that either are known to cause leaky gut or that may be caused leaky gut. And the purpose of this lecture is for somebody who has an autoimmune disease or who know someone with an autoimmune disease, they can just learn more about what are the potential causes. Um, what would I do, me personally, if I had an autoimmune disease? Then when I say autoimmune disease, we're talking about things like lupus, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, polychondri polychondritis. Um, there's a whole bunch of them. Xenocyelitis. So basically, even some allergies and some asthma and whatnot. So there's basically a list of things that cause it or maybe cause it. And what I would do is I would try to avoid all the things on the list. Okay, so let's go through some of them. First of all, antibiotics. Obviously, because antibiotics kill bacteria in the gut, they can change the gut bacterial flora and they can remove some of the so-called good gut bacteria, which produce butyrate, which protects the intestinal lining. And you can end up with bad bacteria, which do things like eat the mucus layer and which <clears throat> release LPS endotoxins and increase the risk of leaky gut. Number two, alcohol. Obviously, alcohol kills bacteria. I mean, what do we use it for? You know, alcohol swab to sterilize the skin. Okay, meat. Uh, meat has no fiber. It's the fiber that the good bacteria use to make the butyrate, the short-chain fatty acid, 4-carbon butyrate, that the enterocytes, the colon and the bowel lining cells use to stabilize their tight junctions to prevent leaky gut. Uh, meat has a lot of other problems too. Meat often contains herbicides, which can kill the bacteria. Meat has excessive amounts of saturated fat, and saturated fat um, is like an emulsifier. It has a polar and a nonpolar end such that it's able to increase gut permeability. I'm not sure of the exact mechanism, but somehow the fact that it's amphiphilic, both hydrophobic and hydrophilic, when it's present in excessively large amounts, it is associated with increasing gut permeability. Uh, beef and dairy, new 5GC, that's a type of sialic acid present in beef and dairy, and that can cause something called xenocyelitis, meaning that it's so similar to our own sialic acids. They're the like glycoprotein uh, residues at the tip of the glycocalyx on the outer surface of cells that are important for immune recognition. And so they're so similar that the intestinal tract thinks they belong in our bodies and it puts them on cells, but the problem is the immune system doesn't agree and we're not supposed to have new 5GC on our cells and then it causes an immune response to them. Processed food is basically like a poison. You shouldn't be eating processed food. Uh, I mean, we'll just talk about it a little bit here, but we'll have plenty of other lectures on it. Processed foods contain emulsifiers. Emulsifiers like a fatty acid have both hydrophilic and hydrophobic components. So the reason for having a hydrophilic and hydrophobic components with an emulsifier is they can pull oily material into the aqueous phase. Most things in the body are aqueous phase, meaning that water is the solvent. So uh, if you have something that is a mixed polarity, it can pull the oily materials into the aqueous phase, and that's relevant for processed food that you want everything to stay all mixed together. If it wasn't for the emulsifiers, when they make a processed food, all the layers would separate and it would be kind of a sloppy mess. Um, the oil layers would separate from the aqueous layers rather than stay mixed together. Um, processed food lacks fiber, another reason why it's prone to causing leaky gut. It tends to contain a large amount of herbicides, which also predispose to leaky gut. Um, excessive amounts of sodium, you know, in salt, that tends to increase the activity of the T cells and it can increase the risk of certain problems like asthma. Okay, next one, non-organic food in general. I, I try to never eat non-organic food. I mean, the only exception would be in the rare blue moon when I ever go somewhere, which is pretty rare that I'll ever eat out, but there's a lot of herbicides in there and pesticides and they kill bacteria, okay? So, um, they then can disrupt your gut and lead to leaky gut. Okay, um, next set of causes and associations. Estrogen disrupting chemicals. Uh, people sometimes say EDCs means endocrine disrupting chemicals, but for our intents and purposes, it means estrogen disrupting chemicals. Basically, when a woman is pregnant with a baby, it's like having a transplant and it distorts the immune system. So excessive external. So 
Endocrine is the study of, you know, endo meaning inside, the study of human hormones, but exo means from outside, so exogenous. Endogenous means our body makes it, exogenous means it comes from outside. A lot of people have excessive amounts of exogenous um, estrogen exposures, and these can disrupt their immune system and increase their risk of autoimmune disease. Uh, next thing is leaky guts. We talk about leaky gut, now we're talking about leaky gums. If you have poor dentition, you know, gum disease or tooth disease that's affecting the gums, that can lead to giving bacteria entry into the blood or food particles. So you want to take good care of your teeth, which basically means avoid sweets, avoid acidic things, um, avoid carbonated beverages, clean your teeth after eating, at least rinse your mouth with a, you know, a swig of water, and then I recommend use those quick interdental brushes if it's a time when you can. Uh, probably the most important thing is what you eat. If you avoid sweets and carbonated acidic beverages, like orange juice is terrible for teeth, um, you should be okay. I don't brush my teeth with toothpaste. I think there's too many harmful chemicals in toothpaste. I'll, a couple times a week, especially if I eat anything like a pre-workout meal, maybe a banana or something, but nowadays I'm often having beet juice if I have a pre, pre-workout meal, I'll just um, rub my teeth with the brush because I want to remove any biofilms in which bacteria will have a tendency to persist, like streptococcus mutants, for example. Okay, high fructose corn syrup. Um, that is associated with increased risk of leaky gut, so you shouldn't be eating anything with that stuff in it. Vegetable oils associated with leaky gut, just avoid them. NSAIDs, avoid them. Okay, uh, stuff in the water like chlorine, for example. Uh, and also, we just talked about toothpaste having harmful things here. Uh, definitely should filter that out of your water. You should get a whole house water filter to remove chlorine. It'll also remove estrogen chemicals. A reverse osmosis is a little stronger in the kitchen for drinking water. I would recommend that. The reason why you want a whole house, though, is because the estrogens, for example, are lipid chemicals. They can be transdermally absorbed. The chlorine, for example, et cetera, can be inhaled. So whole house carbon filter, kitchen reverse osmosis filter. I actually think if you have a choice, well water is usually the best thing. But make sure you're in a decent area. Find out what's in the well water before you move there. Like make sure there's no fracking nearby, which can put bad chemicals in the well water. Make sure it's not a place where there's other problems with the well water. So you got to study it. It's worth knowing because we end up ingesting a lot of it. Um, like I said, avoid toothpaste, uh, dishwasher soap. Now these are minor points, but the reason why I go through the minor points, like removing dishwasher from your dishes, is because you have to understand, people die from these autoimmune diseases. Look at multiple sclerosis. It ruins a young woman's life, okay? They, instead of, you know, enjoying their youth, they end up stroked out and often die relatively soon. So if you have to take a little thing, like what do I do when I have a cup? When I have a cup, I'll rinse it in, in the water from the sink, then I'll run my finger on it to get the dishwasher out of there, and then I'll run my hand on the outside. I don't even think you need a dishwasher. Why do you, people have a dishwasher? because they're cooking on it with oil, which makes a mess of everything. Um, if you're not even using oil to cook, a lot of times I just rinse my cup or my bowl afterwards and put it back on a table. I don't need um, a dishwasher. I never had one, you know, until marriage with the wife and all that kind of stuff. Uh, nuts and seeds. Nuts and seeds are high in fat. I would avoid them, including they got a lot of saturated fat. I know that that's a whole big subject. We'll talk about it some other time. But I'm just saying, I mean, basically, with a person with a bad autoimmune disease, they're going down the tubes, and they have to try to get better. And so when you're trying to get better, you know, you don't want to mess around. Anything that might be making you sick, avoid it. Um, nonstick cookware. I don't think you should ever use nonstick cookware. There's a potential for PFAS, PFOA, and getting into the food. It's better to use stainless steel. Okay, here's a couple other things. Psychological stress, and obviously stress can come from a lot of reasons. We've got a bunch of other lectures on this uh, channel on stress. Stress equivalence, sleep deprivation, raises the same hormones, cortisol and the catecholamines, norepinephrine, epinephrine, as well as the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Caffeine does the same thing. That's why I don't think you should drink caffeine. Forget about coffee and tea if you want to optimize your health. That's my advice. I realize most people don't take it, but they'd be better off if they did. Corticosteroids, people are sometimes taking those. Uh, gluten, in some people, that can be associated with increased risk of leaky gut. You might want to discontinue that, but 
not necessarily. I still eat gluten foods. I don't have any problems from them. One thing to remember about gluten foods is the more processed they are, the less healthy they are. Um, carbonated beverages because of the phosphoric acid, artificial sweeteners. Um, they're, you know, you want to avoid all that stuff. You don't get ahead and win the game of health by trying to trick Mother Nature. Mother Nature is pretty smart. What you do is you try to do what Mother Nature wants. Mother Nature wants you basically to live like Adam and Eve, but have indoor heating and indoor plumbing. Okay, Adam and Eve didn't rub chemicals all over themselves. They didn't eat all this processed food. Having a C-section at birth can, um, uh, you know, obviously the child doesn't get as much flora. Normally, it'll swallow the vaginal flora as it's being born, and that'll kind of initiate its gut. Um, SIBO is well, we don't need to get into SIBO, but there's some infections, relatively uncommon. Colon cleanse enema. enema I wonder, you know, be careful to make sure you're, you're eating your plant foods because um, your plant foods restore your, your gut pretty fast. Okay, a couple more things here. So we talked about the rationale for this. If you live the way humans are intended to live based on what our ancestors did thousands of years ago, but with the benefits of modern, you know, indoor heating, indoor plumbing, and antibiotics, <clears throat> you probably do pretty well. Sunshine is good for us. We're made to go out in the sun. So try to make sure you're getting some sun. You get more activated vitamin D that way because the vitamin D that's measured in a lab is just 25 hydroxy vitamin D. It's not the active form. Active form is 125 hydroxy vitamin D and that decreases autoimmune disease. Okay, and get it, try to get it from the sun, not from pills. That's a better way to get your vitamin D. Um, and then, you know, what's part of the rationale? It's the same diet that's good for pretty much almost everything. It's the same diet that's good for your heart, good for your brain. Uh, good for your energy levels and good for preventing autoimmune disease. It's eating low fat, low sodium, organic only. I stress that organic only. I think it's worth it to eat organic only. Yes, sometimes you can't afford it. Fine, then, then don't. But if you can, I think there's benefits to doing a lot less herbicides and pesticides. And that's been proven. People sometimes say, well, oh, it was organic bogus. No, they've tested a whole bunch of people, their urine and their blood, and they have much less pesticide residues when they're eating organic. It's not perfect, but... It's about the best you can do unless you grow your own food. Um, whole food is best. You know, the entire, eat a carrot. There's no secondary ingredients in a carrot um, or any other uh, fruit or vegetable for the most part. Uh, fiber. It's fiber that feeds the good gut bacteria. It's fiber that the good gut bacteria use to make short-chain fatty acids like acetate, propionate, and butyrate. And butyrate in particular feeds the enterocytes, the gut lining cells. It's like more than two-thirds of their energy supply. And they use that to make strong, good, tight junctions that prevent leaky gut. Fiber is your friend. It protects you from leaky gut, and therefore it helps protect you from autoimmune disease. Um, it is thought that leaky gut is the most common mechanism of causation for leaky gut, for autoimmune disease, but it can sometimes be caused by other things. Uh, but that's the big one. Um, Royce Wank put his multiple sclerosis patients on a low-fat, plant-based diet, and in 34 years follow-up, he had 95% of them maintaining good ability to carry out the activities of daily living. Now, that's an incredible statement because usually MS patients, you know, they don't do so well, okay? And he had 34 years. That's a lot. 34 years. Um, of That's incredible, okay? Um, Stari Stanchik, uh, MD, she's a, a lady who was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. She's a physician, and she was getting sicker and sicker. And then she started to study the nutritional aspect of it, and she noticed that, for example, identical twins had a very low overlap in having MS. I mean, that's highly useful information. What that indicates is that MS is not that genetic. It's primarily environmental and primarily due to diet. And um, she then improved her diet, and her health dramatically improved. DrMcDougall.com has lots of autoimmune disease patients who had dramatic improvement once they improved their diet. There's a bunch of testimonials there, including, you know, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, systemic lupus erythematis, and MS and IBD patients. So here's just a couple references. The, the Swank reference is in here somewhere. Effective low saturated fat diet and early and late multiple sclerosis. 34-year follow-up. That's pretty incredible. Uh, Dr. McDougall's got testimonials at his site of a lot of his experience with autoimmune disease, which is quite a bit. This paper here shows a cross-reactivity between a myelin glycoprotein and a milk protein, butyrophilin, that's thought to be associated with MS. Swankin noticed that MS was a lot more common in the dairy areas of Norway than it was in other areas, 
and he took that insight and it led him to believe that a low-fat diet would be beneficial to these patients. He also made a nice video of looking in the cheek pouches of animals, for example, and watching the um, when they ate a high-fat diet, how the blood would be all sludged together, suggesting that would deprive tissues of oxygen and potentially uh, impair the health of those tissues. That was another contributing finding, not necessarily an autoimmune finding, but a contributing finding to lead him to think that his patients would be healthier if they decreased their dietary fat. And those types of experiments have been replicated in humans on the eye, for example, the Meyer Friedman Ray Rosenman experiment. We've talked about that before in the atherosclerosis lectures. Um, and then these other articles are just along the same lines of, you know, high fat diet associated with endotoxemia, you know, causing a leaky gut, and then um, the LPS endotoxins from the gram negative bacteria getting across the gut lining. Um, here's a paper on xenocyelitis. Um, and then Fasano is sort of a famous researcher on leaky gut, and he talks about zonulin. You know, he was a discoverer of how that protein works in the pathogenesis of leaky gut. So anyways, um, hope this is helpful.